The Brooklyn Nets' first rematch of the regular season was largely similar to last year's first round sweep, with the Nets falling short in the fourth quarter. Boston's defense on Durant was always going to be a major theme in this game, given that Durant was forced into one of his worst playoff series to date by an aggressive Boston defense that swarmed and double teamed him constantly. Knowing this before the ball was tipped, I asked Brooklyn Nets head coach Jacques Vaughn what he expected to see from the Boston Celtics defense. Last year, the Celtics kind of threw the kitchen sink at uh, Kevin, you know, flooding the strong side, uh, doubling on the catch. What type of things have you... Well, first off, did you watch a lot of uh, film from that series in preparation for this game? And if so, um, what sort of things are you guys looking to do to kind of minimize um, how much that's done or figure out ways around that? Yeah, I'm very interested to see how they play him tonight. Just uh, statist statistically, they're not playing the same way they were last year. And that's showing up in the numbers as well. So on some of the post-up catches where they immediately double teamed him, they're not double teaming as much uh, this year. Uh, and so let's see if they do it tonight. We have a little history of playing extremely well when they do double. Um, we'll put Kevin in different positions on the floor than we did at that series uh, to take advantage of matchups and spacing on the floor. And then that piece of spacing around there, we'll surround him tonight with a, if they want to leave somebody, that dude that they leave can make a shot. And then after the game, I asked Vaughn the very same question, and I think his answer provides a really nice backdrop to the start of this video. So I asked you before the game about the defensive looks on Kevin. You said you were really curious to see what the Celtics throw at him. We're at the end of the game. What'd you think? What'd you think of what Boston threw at him? Yeah, that's why the game is so interesting, right? So previous years, they double-teamed him. So the first three quarters, they didn't which is great. That's why you, you, you watch it, you see how it folds. So first three quarters they didn't, then he started going off a little in the post, then they double teamed him. Um, and it was a mixed bag for us. We got some good looks, we were able to swing the basketball, that produces energy for us. We also had some turnovers at the same time as well. So yeah, Kevin Durant saw a lot of single coverage for the first three quarters. You got a pretty good glimpse at everything in his bag, stationary middies, runners, stops on a dime for pull-ups. On certain plays, he hunted down Boston's weakest defenders like Sam Hauser on switches for the layup at the cup. And then smaller defenders like Malcolm Brogdon were also targeted by KD. It didn't really matter where Durant was on the floor, nor who was in front of him, Durant got busy handling at the top of the key or in the mid post. And by my count, 16 of Durant's 31 points came by isolating against and exploiting Boston's single coverage. That brings us to the fourth quarter, or really the end of the third where double teams started happening. I'll let Jacques Vaughn set the scene. If I could follow up, what do you think of the timing on those double teams uh, in the fourth quarter on Kevin? Uh, just overall, we have to take advantage when teams double team. Um, if you're going to send a second guy at our best player, then we got to make you pay for it. And I think some of it was uh, two times it was TJ who hasn't practiced a play with us. A little hesitation on his cut down the middle. Uh, then the other times, I think once we swing, swing that thing and it gets to the second guy, you got to shoot it. So they were able to close out on more than a couple occasions where they double team still were able to close out on our shooters. Can't allow that to happen. This, I think, was one of the two plays Vaughn was referring to that involved TJ Warren. Grant Williams doubles off Warren, and I guess Warren could have cut a little bit sooner, but I'm just not really sure that passing window was there in the first place. Here's the second of the two plays and a much better example of what Vaughn was talking about. Warren, who's originally defended by Jason Tatum, dumps the ball off to Durant in the post, and I think on this play you can make a pretty strong argument that Warren's positioning hurts the Nets almost immediately. He sort of just lingers at the free throw line, which invites the double team from Tatum on Durant, and Warren doesn't cut through until it's too late. Brooklyn ends up with a long two from Joe Harris, which is not a great look. Continuing on, this time Durant is isolating and handling up top versus Al Horford instead of posting up. Horford does an amazing job angling his body to send Durant middle, where Jalen Brown is waiting at the nail, and though it looks like the ball just slips Clips from Durant's hands, this is just really good team defense from Boston against a fairly stagnant net set. Just looking back at this possession, one thing I would have liked to have seen is TJ Warren cutting through the middle of the paint at a 45 degree angle, which could have attracted Derek White's attention. This in turn could have opened up room for Joe Harris, who was originally defended by White, to rise up the wing for the catch and shoot three. One possession later, we have a very similar setup, Durant isolating against Horford, who is funneling 
KD toward the help of Derek White. You can actually see Durant motion at O'Neal to clear out of the way, and I would have gone one step further with O'Neal cutting on that very same 45 degree angle into the paint. Derek White blitzes Durant, and he makes, funny enough, what would have been the perfect pass to O'Neal had he cut on that 45 degree, which is actually kind of a shame because Malcolm Brogdon is playing center field between O'Neal and Irving, so if Durant had just made the pass to his right to O'Neal at the right wing, Brooklyn would have ended up with a three from O'Neal or a three from Kyrie Irving on the extra swing. But again, I think this set was sort of doomed from the start just because Durant and O'Neal were so off on their timing. And then finally, in what should be a very familiar look, Grant Williams is shading Durant middle and taking away the driving lane going right with Jalen Brown creeping down to the nail in help off Kyrie Irving. Durant takes the bait and dribbles middle, and though the contact is questionable, I think you can make a pretty strong case that he misses a pass to Irving relocating at the top of the arc. Boston just presents a really difficult matchup for the Nets in the first place. Some of Brooklyn's best offense comes in isolation because of Durant's greatness, but Boston is one of the few teams equipped to defend this because of the rangy athleticism found up and down the roster. Still, though, there are ways that the Nets can counteract Boston's historically effective aggressive coverage. Look, I know there's a massive burden on Kevin Durant's shoulders, but he probably needs to be a slightly more patient and selective passer. We've touched on a few of his eight turnovers against Boston, and this cross-court pass to Cam Thomas in the corner is incredibly difficult and risky in the first place, but especially over a defender as good as Jason Tatum. I realized that by jumping in the air, Jalen Brown initially took away the pass to Royce O'Neal rising up the wing, but if Durant had done a pass fake to Cam in the corner to get Tatum leaning, then I think we could have seen that window to O'Neal open up again. But in general, I'd like to see the Nets diversify the type of looks that Durant gets. It'd be nice to see Durant Durant get the ball on the move a little bit more rather than just attacking Boston's set defense from a stationary position. We didn't see Durant come off any pin downs on Sunday, which could confuse Boston's switching defense, nor dribble handoffs, double screens, staggered screens, or anything of the sort, and I thought this play was worth saving. Brooklyn busts out some screen-to-screener action for KD, who comes off the down screen from Nick Claxton only to ghost a ball screen for Kyrie. Malcolm Brogdon and Grant Williams are a beat slow on their switch, KD hits a ridiculous runner, and again, it's nice to see Durant make plays off a head start because of movement. Durant's teammates can also move and cut more, as pointed out previously. Durant receives a cross screen and gets the mismatch with Peyton Pritchard, which forces a double team from Grant Williams off the entry passer, Kyrie Irving, and watch the movement from here. Nick Claxton cuts to the rim, which pulls in Jalen Brown. Kyrie Irving relocates up the wing, which makes it hard for Grant Williams to recover back. And Cam Thomas and TJ Warren exchange positions on the weak side, which causes Jalen Brown to hesitate for a second as the Celtics try to rotate out of the disadvantage. Swing swing action gives Cam Thomas the corner three, even after bobbling the basketball. Consistently encouraging this type of movement from his teammates will make life much easier on Kevin Durant. Yes, Boston has won eight consecutive games against the Nets dating back to last season. Not good, largely by running a fairly similar defensive scheme. But as hopefully pointed out in this video, Brooklyn does still have some options at its disposal. Diversifying Kevin Durant's look along with having his teammates cut and relocate could shake things up and make Boston's defense think and move a little bit. And on a lesser note, in all honesty, it kind of felt like Boston threw the Nets off the scent a little bit by showing KD single coverage for three quarters only to bust out that aggressive swarming coverage in the fourth quarter, which I kind of think caught the Nets off guard, so credit to Joe Missoula for that. These two teams meet up on January 12th, and I personally cannot wait to see how the Nets and Durant handle handle things this go around on offense. But with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and go ahead and share it on Twitter and Reddit. If you like this video, follow me on Twitter. Everything's there, articles, podcasts, videos like this, threads, you name it. And that's all I've got today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Peace.